Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 22nd, 2012. I am David Domzaski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Now, before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share a few quick notes. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. You can do so for just 99 cents on Kindle, Nook, iPad, and other e-readers. And you can also do so and get a paperback copy for just under 10 bucks at Amazon and CreateSpace. Go to financialbid.com, click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Secondly, we are still finalizing everything for Landlord Intervention. Now, this is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years. He gives you a fantastic step-by-step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. And we plan to release this book in early June. Now, let me introduce, introduce you to our guest today. His name is Michael Rosenbaum. Michael is the author of uh, the new biography about discount tire founder Bruce Hale. book's called Six Tires, No Plan, The Impossible Journey of the Most Inspirational Leader That Almost Nobody Knows. And he joins us right now. Michael, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem at all. Now, we just want to jump right in, into it here, Michael. So the first thing I have for you is can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Okay. Uh, I am the founder of the Quadrant 5 methodology, which is basically a way for business owners to figure out what's really working and driving most of the sales and account retention in their company and then just do more of that and less of the other stuff that doesn't add any value. So I'm I'm big on corporate focus, uh, which I developed over the years as a consultant to public companies and earlier in studying companies as a as a financial news reporter. Um, so I've been a consultant for a number of years. I was a financial uh, news reporter and editor before that. And uh, every so often, someone convinces me that uh, uh, there's a book out there that I should write. Uh, Six Tires No Plan is my fifth book, and uh, the fourth in the uh, business realm. So is that is that the only reason you wrote the book? What what what, uh, what main reason? Why why did you want to focus on uh, Bruce Hale and, and tell a story? Yeah, well, ultimately, the reason I was intrigued by Bruce Holly and his uh, story is that Bruce really didn't want this book written. Now, it, it's not that he was violently opposed to it or else I wouldn't have gotten any access to the company. But um, a friend of mine and a former business partner, uh, we did some consulting and wrote a book together, had suggested that I should write a book about uh, Holly because he his story is one of those inspirational tales that you don't hear as many of in, in American business today as you might hear about uh, uh, rapscallions and knaves. Um, so I said, you know, this is not the type of thing I'm interested in right now. Uh, certainly a biography is not what I've done. My other books about business have been more uh, on particular industries and how to succeed in them. And I also was not thrilled with the idea of a guy who runs tire stores. I mean, what, what could possibly be interesting about a guy running tire stores? Right, and Marilyn, right. my friend, said, uh, well, meet him, you'll feel differently, and she was right. So can you, uh, I, without giving too much away, obviously, can you kind of uh, tell us a little bit about, maybe just give a quick rundown of Bruce's story? Sure. Uh, this is a guy uh, who is probably worse off than 90, was at one point, not now, was at one point, worse off than 95% of your listeners. He uh, was a, a, a child of the Depression. Uh, the family moved around a lot uh, uh, from place to place as they could afford to live in one, one place or another. He was a terrible student, hardly got out of high school, decided to go to college, hardly got out of college. Um, he had a terrible temper, uh, got in fights all the time and really had pretty much no direction in life. Uh, after he got out of college, uh, he, he decided to go into insurance sales where he bombed. Then he borrowed money to invest in another person's business, which he and the other and his friend drove into the ground. And when he started Six Tires, uh, when he started Discount Tire, uh, all he had left from his last failed business was Six Tires, and basically no plan other than to uh, sell the Six Tires, buy six more, and see if he could sell those. Now, so that I, was, I just that was ask, his story. Right. I, I just have to ask uh, who uh, made the decision on the on the cover photo. I guess that was a, that was a former ad, right? Yeah, it was from a former ad. This is the the cover photo yeah. is uh, is Bruce standing <clears throat> ostensibly naked in, in a pile of tires <laughs> from an ad from around 1967. Yeah. And um, uh, I I asked for permission to use the ad, 
And they said okay, which, by the way, this is one of those indications that uh, um, this guy is not the same as most self-made billionaires. <laughs> right, it's hard right. to imagine Donald Trump having an embarrassing <laughs> photo like that from 1970 and saying, sure, put that on the cover. Well, actually, he probably liked that because, I mean, it would be better for his hair situation, right? <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> well, so going into, can you tell us a little bit about maybe Bruce's uh, success strategies? Um, you know, I, mean, I feel like that's something that's kind of carried over, uh, you know, maybe some, some things that he learned throughout life, and it's kind of really carried over, and, and he's taken it really to heart as he, uh, you know, developed and grew Discount Tire. Yeah, one you know, one of the things I liked is in, in, in writing Six Tires No Plan and, and, and tracing his story and, and his success strategies, the thing you find is he wasn't born with a, with a legion of angels hovering overhead and singing his praises. This is a guy who learned these things the hard way and a little bit intuitively, which is great for the rest of us because it means we can do it too. So among the things that he that he learned along the way was the importance of connecting with people the importance of connecting with a customer and, and, and connecting with other employees, not simply thinking of each each person as disposable. So even today, when when you sit down and talk to him, he'll ask you a lot of questions about yourself. He'll, he'll seem to be more interested in you than he is in anything else at the moment, and he's not going to tell you a lot about himself, which endears him to a lot of people who, you know, we all want to talk about ourselves, and right. this guy wants to listen. So that makes a real connection. Uh, he also is very big on sharing credit. Um, he he had a few people who were uh, uh, influencers in his life, and he noted that they they tended to share credit with other people, give credit to other people instead of taking it all to themselves, and the people responded to that. And so he will often um, share credit more than take it. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the things he'll do, for example, uh, I was up at the, uh, a company retreat that they have for their for the guys who work in the stores, and there are 800 stores around the country, and the guys compete all year to get up to this retreat because it's a big deal, and he is always going up to them and thanking them for making him a success, and wow. in a way, it's true that all these everyday Joes have made him a success. But it's also true that he has given them the opportunity to be as successful as they can be. So that's a, that's a success strategy in itself. How you how you focus on the employee in a way that makes the employee want to do more for the company. Um, I think another thing that he did that's a part of it that's a real success strategy. Although uh, I think it's a little bit intuitive for, for him more than strategic, is he he thinks of these of every. Um, relationship as a relationship you know in business a lot of people think of transactions person comes in the store they buy something they leave uh, and that's true everything is a transaction but every good relationship starts with one transaction he tends to look at every every transaction as the first step in a relationship and where he's been truly brilliant is in hiring guys who have the same kind of attitude that he does and developing that culture where the people who come to work for the company have that attitude as well. And the guys that succeed are the ones who want to pay it forward to the customer, pay it forward to their other employees, uh, think of something, being part of a team. And uh, and that's been a, a real a driver of success. I mean, this is a company in 50 years has never had a layoff, and they've never wow. had a down year for revenue. Wow. So they're doing something right. And it's not that their tires are any better. They're selling the same tires as everybody else. Now, has there ever, I mean, in your years of experience, has there any been another company that stands out that maybe uh, mimics uh, Bruce's, you know, take in, in terms of, you know, you know, valuing the relationships over anything else? You know, I've, I've represented a couple of hundred companies, mostly public, uh, over the years, and nobody came to mind in terms wow. of someone who had this exact combination or this strong wow. combination of things. Uh, it is truly different, and, and one of the reasons that I became very enthusiastic about writing a story about a guy who opens tire stores is sure. that I began. It's, it's not the talking to him; it's the talking to his employees and listening to how their insight is reflected. You know, is a reflection of a model that he created 50 years ago, but somehow he's got a bunch of 20 and 30 and 40 year old guys, you know, just committed to maintaining. And that that is that's really powerful stuff. 
So, yeah. so it, in, and in fact, by the way, in, in Six Tires No Plan, there's a couple of chapters that aren't about Holly at all because right. you only understand what this guy has done by understanding his employees. So those two chapters are just about you know, employee stories and how the employees look at and model after what they see as Bruce creating for them. Well, I think it's definitely something, you know, as, as a, a young entrepreneur maybe reading this, it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind and saying, you know, maybe I want to approach business and approach as I, you know, continue to grow my company the Bruce Holly Ray way. I mean, that, that, that that's what I kind of got out of reading it. I mean, I, I definitely want to take his principles and, 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 you know, his focus on people because I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, in, one of the things that's interesting, I'm, I'm, none of us are going to invent Facebook or whatever. Most of us will not be inventing a computer or something like that. But right. uh, here's a guy in a business. It's retail, which means your product is no, has no competitive advantage whatsoever because your product can be bought someplace else. Exactly. Um, and it's automotive supplies, which is even worse than retail. <laughs> so how do you create? How do you change that, which is essentially a commodity, into a brand? And the answer is you figure out what it is you're selling, and then you also figure out what it is the customer's buying. Because, you know, when I, exactly. I, when I consult with people, I always make this point. The customer, what the customer is buying is never listed on the invoice, which means the customer is not specifically buying your product and not specifically buying it at a particular price. The, the customer is buying a solution, a comfort level, something. And keying in on what the customer likes and what makes the customer want to come back is the key to success in any business. Uh, it's especially in retail, but, but everywhere. And this book talks about how you really think through the, the, the difference. Like, for instance, Discount Tire does not sell replacement tires. They sell 11 or 10 or 20 or whatever million tires in a year. They do not sell replacement tires. They sell tire replacement. You know, one's a commodity you can buy down the street. The other's a service you can customize. And for any entrepreneur, knowing what it is you're selling and what the customer's buying is a difference between life and death. Uh, absolutely, that, that, that's great advice, Michael. Um, now, now, kind of transitioning a little bit, you know, it's month of May. We got about a, a week to go in the month of May here. A lot of college seniors are graduating or have already graduated. I actually just attended my, attended my brother's uh, graduation up at Fordham University in New York. You know, so many don't have a job or many have no job prospects. How can learning from Bruce Holly and, and reading this book, how can that help them out? Well, I think that one of the keys there is to identify how people become successful who start out with nothing. And I think it's key because when you, when you read the book and you figure out where Holly screwed up, which he did, and where and how he succeeded, which, of course, he has, sure. you begin to see how you should be approaching the next job interview, or if, you, if and when you get a job, how you should be approaching that job. So, for, in, for instance, um, the idea of being part of the team, um, which, we, which we find in all these employees that I've interviewed, their idea of being part of a team and doing something better and, 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 and looking beyond just themselves is a real value when you start out in your first job and the boss is trying to figure out whether you're a keeper or not. Right. You know, similarly... Uh, how how you identify what the customer wants, uh, and 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 deliver on that, which makes the customers like you, which often makes your boss like you, is another key. So, having a sense of of of, of how to how to deliver the value to the person who pays the bills, which in you know the case of any any company is ultimately the customer, but if you're an employee. You know, there's there's the customer, there's your boss, um, and uh, and that's about it for the first uh, year or so you're on the job. And how do you how do you work in that environment? How do you identify what what they think is valuable? You can you can get a sense of that from reading this book, and also you get confidence. And the reason you get confidence is if you read Six Tires No Plan, you find out that it's okay. It's not okay, but it, it, it's almost inevitable. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. Holly continued even as the company was on a roll to try out all kinds of new ventures that failed right. and and get, and then get back to sticking to his knitting. So it's not like this is a story of, of un, 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 unalloyed uh, success. This is a story about how to overcome obstacles and, and, and to figure out how to achieve success on your own terms. What's your ultimate goal for the book, Michael? Pretty much that. My goal is to – my goal – is to have people who are starting a business or starting their careers 
or try to get better at their business. Take a look at how this guy did it, focusing on things that are skills everybody has and lessons everybody knows to be true, and just apply them in a consistent enough way to be successful over the long term. Uh, you know what? If everybody in this country read and followed this book, GDP growth would be about 80%. I agree I'm not with you, absolutely. That, by the way, but, but that's, uh, <laughs> there may be some exaggeration in that. Okay, maybe, maybe 90. We'll go with 90. How about that? Okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, given that, given given what you what you want hope to accomplish and what you plan to accomplish with the book, what kind of feedback have you received so far? What kind of press have you received? Well, it's been very good. Mostly, it's mostly I've been talking to people on the radio. I've done a number of uh, bylined articles for uh, Forbes. dot com and Chief Executive. dot com and so on on the lessons in the book, and um, and the response has been very good because I think people. In, in business and, and, in, and in life in general, uh, really w- need to hear an inspirational story about a guy who got to the top without killing people and, <laughs> um, and, and about how it's possible to, uh, to do well by doing good in this world. And I think people need that kind of inspiration. They appreciate it. Uh, and that's why the, the response has been very favorable to the book. Every, everything I've seen has been has just been remarkable. People have you know all the way back in a you know a couple months ago are already purchasing, already reading it. Can't can't wait. So you know I, I really commend you on that, and you know it's a fantastic read. So I definitely recommend all of the listeners get out there and purchase their copy right away. So speaking speaking of that, as we wrap up here, where can the listeners learn more about you, Michael? Learn more about Bruce and 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 buy the book. Well, my my business website is uh, www. Q5works.com. It's the letter Q and the number five works. W O R K S. dot com. The book uh, website is uh, www.sixtiresnoplan.com, and uh, that's got all sorts of extra information about the book and about Bruce. You can buy the book at Barnes and Noble. Uh, you can buy the book uh, for your Kindle, for your Nook, for your iPad, for your iPhone. I think if you have a Dick Tracy decoder ring, you can buy it for that too. <laughs> Um, we, you know, it's available in all the electronic versions plus uh, the paper version, which you can buy either online or at an actual bookstore. So um, uh, it's it's very accessible uh, uh, everywhere. That's fantastic. Well, I definitely want to have you on again sometime, maybe sometime later this year. Maybe you, you and Bruce could come on and just kind of talk about the book success and, and maybe other things that you're working on. This has been a, a real pleasure, and I really hope that people out there that are struggling, trying to figure out what to do with their lives, especially those uh, recent college grads, I really hope to pick up a copy. So, uh, And I want to thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care, Michael. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you too. Bye. All right, everybody, that was Michael Rosenbaum, and make sure to check him out on Q5Works.com. That is the letter Q, number 5, Works.com. And also, make sure to pick up Six Tires, No Plan, The Impossible Journey of the Most Inspirational Leader that Almost Nobody Knows About. But you know what? You know about him now. His name is Bruce Holly, and he is the founder of Discount Tires. Pick up that book at Six Tires, No Plan, all one word, Dot com. I want to thank you for joining us. Make sure to check out Financialman for the latest on personal finance and entrepreneurial advice for Generation Y. Pick up your copy of Six Tires No Plan. Pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention, and we'll let you know when Landlord Intervention is available for you to purchase as well. Till next time, I'm David Domzowski. Thank you for listening.